And I am going to start recording, um, so we're going to get started. Um, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you may be joining us for today's session. My name is Wendy Matsker. I'm the Director of Membership Services at the HR Today Association. For those of you who are joining us as a guest of the association, I'd like to take just three minutes to provide a quick overview of our resources and programming before we dive into today's session. Dive into today's session. This really will take just three minutes, so please stay with us. <clears throat> The HRO Today Association is a global network of HR practitioners, service providers, and analysts who work together to advance the profession of human resources. Membership is convenient and customized, covering everyone on your team while allowing each person to create their own experience by choosing different engagement opportunities. Resources in a variety of formats ensure that members are, are current when it comes to trends, metrics, and regulations. And perhaps the most important resource, our, the largest global HR community, is at members' fingertips via our online membership directory, connecting HR professionals to best practices and lessons learned from all over the world. One of our most convenient platforms for sharing those best practices is our professional development live streams, what you are participating in right now. Different formats bring together industry experts to deliver insightful perspectives and meaningful takeaways that improve strategy and overall performance. If you're interested in presenting a live stream, simply send your proposed topic to me at wendy.metzger at sharedexpertise.com. Remember too that sessions are available on, on demand for association members to access at any time after the broadcast. <clears throat> now I'd like to take just a minute to talk about the HRO Today Provider Certification Program launched earlier this year. The program is designed to give providers leverage in a competitive market while ensuring consumers have access to the most reputable vendors. Being certified demonstrates a commitment to quality that goes over and above what's required. It shows willingness to be a game changer, a business that makes the highest standards of quality its everyday business practices. Certification also reserve, reserves providers a spot in the HR, HR Procurement Center, the world's first virtual marketplace. Currently in the final phase of construction, the center will streamline purchasing and, purchasing and safeguard, buy, excuse me, safeguard buyers by ensuring they are choosing from only the most trusted vendors. And we'd like to congratulate these businesses who now have instant credibility with prospective clients and who will be featured in the HR Procurement Center. And we'd like to note that Yo, whose representatives are joining us for today's live stream, was the very first HRO Today certified provider, once again demonstrating their industry leadership. For more information on the program, please visit our website. And of course, association members receive reduced pricing to participate. And finally, we'd like to invite you to the HRO Today Associate Association Conference, which will be held this year on November 17th from 12 to 4 p.m. Eastern Time. This event is a half-day virtual HR retreat that will cover all aspects of using technology to advance talent, talent strategies, as well as how leaders can prepare for the future of work. One of today's speakers, Mike Dackenhaus, will present at the conference, focusing on how to use technology to attract the best talent. The event's virtual platform won't sacrifice the networking experience. HR leaders will enjoy real-time, natural interaction that is often just as valuable as the key takeaways from the sessions. Registration is open on the association website with reduced pricing available before October 15th. And now I'd like to introduce our presenters, all joining us from Yale. Craig Collardew, Senior Project Manager for Customer Integration, has over 10 years of industry experience working in various roles, including Senior Recruiter, On-Site Manager, Implementation Manager, and Senior Project Manager in a variety of industries. Craig is an expert in project management, implementation methodology, client relations, problem solving, training, communication, and change management. Mike Deckenhaus, Senior Director of Digital Transformation, has over 18 years of industry experience, consistently bringing value to clients by evaluating and transforming recruitment processes through re-engineering, technology selection and implementation, and project management expertise. His expertise with emerging recruitment technology, sourcing strategies, and operational effectiveness has produced countless cost savings and increased, and increased recruitment performance. As Senior Director of Customer Solutions, Chris, Christopher Manala was responsible for the strategies and governance that drive effective implementation and ongoing delivery for a wide range of clients and services, including supply chain, supply chain management that span various work, workforce solutions. He also oversees all implementation and execution of organiz, organization-wide projects related to quality, compliance, and process efficiency. So welcome, 
everybody. And why don't we start out today's discussion by talking about some of the most important elements to consider when implementing a to total talent solution. Whoever wants to start, go right ahead. Sure, I guess I'll jump in. Thank you for that introduction. Uh, you know, implementing, implementing DZ Connect's total talent for you is really about designing solutions that bring together technology, data analytics, and operating excellence to deliver best in class talent. And so I think to do this successfully, um, you know, you're working to implement that sort of optimal intersection of people, process, and technology that fits within the customer's business model and culture. You know, each one of those components have their own unique challenges when implementing, but I think our ability to build relationships with people and partnerships with our customers really allows us to prepare them uh, for that transformation to true total talent uh, and manage a seamless change journey. And I think that that's always going to be one of the most critical aspects when we're implementing our solutions. It's really preparing our customer uh, to manage change, to be prepared for the, the journey that they're going to be on. You know, I think about when we implement some of our, our programs, you know, there are, there's so many varieties and it can take anywhere from, you know, four to 20 weeks and you can have upwards of 700 individual uh, deliverables that are going on at any one time that you have to care for to ensure, you know, a successful go live. And so I think it's, it's really important early in the engagement to, um, you know, to actively listen to and understand the current state of your customer's business and the goals that they want to achieve uh, through that partnership with, uh, with DZ Connects. I think, Craig, you might want to talk a little bit about, um, about that business readiness and really our approach to, to prepping our customer. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Uh, to Chris's point, um, understanding every detail of our customers' culture, their current state programs, and developing those relationships with the key stakeholders are all critical success factors in every one of our DZ Connects implementations. And our customer integration team immediately starts to care for those factors early on in every implementation. And like Chris said, that starts with our customer readiness assessment. This customer readiness assessment is used to determine how ready a customer is for this level of organizational change. It also highlights potential red flags or roadblocks to change and provides our customers with valuable feedback, which can be used to prepare our customers for this type of change. This feedback includes a detailed stakeholder analysis, a company stakeholder grid, a readiness SWOT analysis, a readiness score, a personalized readiness recommendation from Yo, I'm sorry, from DZ Connects, uh, captures the unique critical success factors for each individual customer and also allows our team to hyper personalize our customer integration process and implement implementation approach um, as we prepare to design the new contingent workforce program for our customers and to provide a successful implementation of that program. Yeah, I think Craig hit the nail on the head. I think it's really about um, understanding every detail of our customer. Um, and to really kind of deliver uh, the right solution for them. I think the thing that I love most about uh, DZ Connects and our approach to building these solutions is that, you know, while we lead with, um, you know, with best practice and recommendation that we've built and refined through over 30 years of industry experience, you know, when we go on customer, we're not here to fit that customer into a pre-designed DZ Connects program. We're really here to design the customer a program that is distinctly theirs, uh, where we become an operational extension of and manage on their behalf. And I think that type of partnership and, and collaboration is one that really creates genuine investment in each other. And it creates a greater user experience for both, uh, you know, the customer and the, and the talent we're onboarding. I don't know, Mike, what do you think? Yeah, again, I mean, when we talk about this idea, Craig mentioned this idea of a, of a readiness survey, right? So, um, when we are thinking about readiness, that takes on a whole host of, of components. Uh, Chris led by talking about this intersection of people, process, and technology. And we think about this just from a pure technology perspective. That assessment includes understanding what technologies are in play. Uh, who's responsible for managing those technologies? You know, as the marketplace swings towards true total talent solutions. And as DZ Connects steps in to help facilitate those particular solutions on behalf of our customers, one of the first things that we find we have to overcome 
is this idea that you have technologies that historically have been managed by two very different parts of the organization, right? So if we think about total talent really taking into consideration traditional contingent labor and contingent labor management, as well as direct hire or direct placement uh, um, fulfillment capability, you know, that direct hire, oftentimes those systems are traditional HRA, HRAS systems, applicant tracking or human capital management platforms, and they have fallen under the scope of ownership of the human resources or the talent acquisition organization. And so as those individuals are configuring those systems and defining those processes that those systems will deliver, they do so with a very specific intent in mind. And they're looking at that through the lens of an HR talent acquisition professional, which is what you would expect them to do in the, in the model where that is managed separately. Well, now what you're bringing into that from a total talent solution perspective is this contingent labor component that has historically in most organizations been managed by a procurement organization or in partnership with an MSP provider in partnership with the procurement organization. So again, you're looking at systems that were designed and implemented with a specific perspective in mind, right? So now when you start talking about total talent and again from a pure systems perspective not to mention the people and process side of it you're bringing together these two organizations into a new world whereby they need to exist and whereby we from a dz connects perspective need to be able to facilitate the change management component of that Sure. The, the new process, the new world of what all that means. And so from a pure technology perspective, and now pause and allow Chris to speak to the, some of the, the people change management side of this is, what are the systems that are in place? How are those systems configured? Where do they support the new environment? Where do they have technical gaps? Um, and, and what is our path forward from a technology solution perspective? Do those technologies continue to exist and continue to facilitate those work streams that they are specifically designed for? And then from a total talent perspective, we need to overlay as an example in our mind, a, a integration platform that allows this data to sit, flow seamlessly together so that we can have a view of the talent solution as a whole um, or are there uh, opportunities where we need to bring in additional third party platforms and integrate those with, with those client side systems and create a new norm, right? A new way of doing business. So from a pure technology perspective, it's what exists, what needs to exist in the future, right? What are the technical capabilities and gaps who are the users of those systems? What are their user experiences? Who are all the other stakeholders involved? And oh, by the way, what gaps might we need to go fill with other pieces of technology? So just right there, right? It's easy. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's, so, there's so much there. There's so much there to unpack. I almost don't even know where, where to begin, right? But I guess, you know, from, a, from an integration standpoint, um, you know, and I, I've said this to you in the past and we kind of laugh about it, right? But I always say, you know, the technology is what it is, right? It, it can do what it can do or it can't. Um, and all of those things that you just talked about, there are all of these um, great advantages to having various technology platforms available to us, um, whether it's to analyze data, whether it's speed to fulfillment, whatever it may be. But at the end of the day, at the deck plate using manager experience, you know, they have one thought on their mind, right? get me talent and minimize disruption to my business. And anytime you introduce change and think about all the things that you just mentioned, the complexity of that, if you're at the deck plate using manager, you're like, whoa, hold on a second, right? That's a whole lot there. 
my world is is different. What about this relationship I just had directly with this supplier? And so it really, you know, in the early stages of, of an implementation, and it really for us starts at the point where our customer gives us a verbal and says, hey, I, I want to go through with this, right? I want to do this, uh, you know, and then we're off negotiating contracts. But my team is stepping in immediately with the customer and saying, hey, let's just sit down and talk a little bit about all the things that are going on in your world, right? Some of the points that you mentioned, you know, Mike, from a technology standpoint, but but operationally, right? What's working well for you? Where are some of those gaps that you have? And let's put together a change plan that is very systematic and methodical to take you through this, minimize disruption in your world and, and make you feel comfortable with the moves that are going to, that are going to take place. And, and um, it's not one size fits all. And, and oftentimes, you know, in some cases, our customers have you know, various organizations that are going to sort of deploy this, this seamless tool, but, you know, each org may operate a little bit differently. And so we, we tailor our, our plan and how we introduce change and how we train and how we document new process for them, maybe a little bit differently. Some, you know, might have hands-on roadshows. Um, and obviously in, in today's climate with COVID, that's changed a little bit and we do a lot of that virtually. Um, but I think it's really important. I, I, I just go back to that people part of it is at the very early stage, it's just really sitting down and understanding, you know, what are the goals and objectives of your customer and, and designing, you know, around that. Um, I would just interject here with a question um, that we have um, outside of, you know, you're talking a lot about technology and data and all of those um, aspects how important is really understanding the internal culture of the client and how much of an impact that can have on the implementation? What are some steps that you take, um, you know, that you said, mentioned the assessments and sitting down with the people, but what are some real specific examples of how you um, deal with the cultural differences from client to client? Yeah, I can, I'll, I'll give a couple of examples and then uh, Craig, if you want to, if there's anything you want to pick up specifically on any of the recent implementations, but um, yeah, the culture is really important. So, you know, as an example, we have a, uh, what we call a change workbook that is designed with a bunch of templates that kind of talk about some of the different things that may happen um, as part of the total talent solution build that we'll go through. Um, we'll sit down with the customer, especially if the customer has kind of a communication department, and we'll go through and look at kind of the style of how they've communi change, communicated change in the past, right? Using similar words, similar style, um, branding, things of that nature. We want it to come off um, very much as an extension of, of who they are and what's important to them, what their values are, um, and really kind of design a, a around that. Um, we also have, you know, in some cases, we have customers that... Um, you know, have very strong uh, brand recognition and we build technology with private label to, to, to really leverage that. Um, I, I definitely think that the idea here is, is, is to go in again and, and not, not build a Yo DZ Connects program uh, that the customer is going to fit in, but, but build specifically a customer program that, that leverages their brand, that leverages, um, you know, where they are in the market and what's important to them to attract talent. Um, you know, Craig, if there's any examples you want to use in some of the implementations that we've had recently. Um, but it is very important to take a deep dive into that. Yeah, I would, I would second that. It, it's extremely important to understand a customer's current state business and, and their, their current state culture um, and understanding what works and what doesn't work and, and really capturing their pain points. And, you know, we've talked about the readiness assessment already, but we also do a discovery questionnaire um, and that, that discovery questionnaire is usually handled with the high level uh, core project team. And then after that, we'll do a, a kickoff meeting where we bring in subject matter experts from the, the different customers and their different organizations internally. Um, and that's a really good meeting um, or workshops throughout that, that time that we spend with them to capture the different uh, pain points and different cultures of different departments. Because one organization can have a, you know, a company wide culture you get into IT, you get into procurement, you get into HR, each department can have its own culture and its own kind of communication style and, and what works best for them. So those design workshops and you know, a little bit further into the implementation are, are critical in understanding what's going to work best for the customer in the future. And to Chris's point, designing a program that's their program and it's not a YO program. Yeah, and I think if I could offer of that too, is that a lot of that will design, will, will define, excuse me, define the pace at which we implement, right? So if you have um, 
customers where there's you know consistency maybe in, in process and alignment and kind of how things operate um, you may be able to step in and, and perform a rapid deployment very quickly um, we have other customers that, that have several uh, business units and organizations that, that manage a little bit differently and and we might drop them into more of a phased approach or even a, a what we would call a measured approach where uh, where we may take one customer and split each organization into a very specific implementation one at a time, right? Um, and so I think, again, sitting down and, and going through that with the customer and really understanding that current state will help to, you know, to define that pace that they have the appetite to move at. Yeah. And I, and I would just, I would just add to that, that what's interesting is when we step into those environments where we, there is a pre-existing culture and a methodology. And then the champion within the customer is a change agent. And so while they are aware of the culture that exists, what they actually want to drive is uh, change as rapidly as possible. Yeah. And again, you know, th that, that introduces new dynamics and things that, that, um, I've experienced and know that, that Chris and Craig and their teams have been able to help facilitate and, uh, and drive through. But those are certainly interesting experiences as well, uh, where we step in and there's a recognition of what the existing culture is, whether that culture is around technology or process or people, but then there's a change agent that's the executive sponsor that is driving to a very different outcome, right? And, and those can be um, very dynamic experiences and situations yeah. to be in. For sure, for sure. Another um, item you had mentioned, uh, a discussion item was how to have success long-term. Um, what are some of the uh, parts of the process that you have to ensure that whatever you're implementing is going to have um, long-term success? Are there benchmarks? What kind of measure, uh, measures of success are, are in place? Yeah, I think. Does that, make, does that question make sense? <laughs> yeah, no, no, it, it does. It does make sense. I, um, you know, I, I think there's there's some operational element in there um, for for sure. I think that from an implementation perspective, you know, we want to we obviously want to look as the contract is being negotiated. Obviously, Craig and I um, have had some experience in this where, you know, and, and Mike, I'm sure will smile. The sales you, you sell you sell a program. Uh, and the expectations when you get to the, to the seat of the table to begin designing the program starts to be a little bit different. And then you get the operators in and it gets, a, you know, it gets a little bit more clouded. Uh, and so I think that at an implementation perspective, we like to really um, kind of get everything sort of documented, right? Like what, what are the requirements of the contract and what are some of the indicators that, that will drive success, whether it's, um, you know, response time or, you um, you know, fill ratios or th things of that nature. And the program is built and the technology is built in accordance with those, with those requirements. But I think the long-term success really comes at the operational level when you get into the QBRs, right? And I think one of the differentiators that, that um, I see for our team, uh, for my team, is that um, while we implement programs, we don't get to a go live and then sort of go away. I have uh, members of my team that support from a help desk pers perspective on all technology issues. Um, I do oversee the supplier relations team. So when you get into QBRs, you start to look at supplier performance and, and, and getting talent uh, to the customer. We're able to really look deep at those numbers and our supply base. But those QBRs are really important because you want to constantly be testing. How's this going, right? Is this meeting the intent of the contract? Is this meeting the intent of the design uh, we build very specific program guides. Um, I'm, a, I'm a process guy at heart, so uh, it's really important for me when you build programs, you build levels of consistency in it so that, that success can be repeatable. Uh, it's not left to chance. Um, but you got to constantly kick the tires on your program, right? You, you never want to you never want to relax on it. You want to constantly look at it and assess how's it going. And um, I think you know we do a pretty good job of doing that, and then uh, evolving the program as we go. Right. Um, making some technology enhancements, perhaps to produce a more efficient um, experience. Uh, but I think it really at the operational level, it's the uh, it's it's the diligence in those QBRs with our customer to really check down on on health of a program. 
Yeah, and let's not lose sight in this. This It's an interesting question, no doubt, but let's not new, lose sight of the fact that Total Talent Solutions is really just maturing from a concept into operational design and delivery, right? And so, you know, those benchmarks and those, um, you know, objectives relative to each individual customer are frequently different based upon who is the primary driver of the total talent. What, what voice or seat at the table does HR and talent acquisition have relative to procurement, right? Is this a, is this a cost savings, cost sensitive drive, and therefore those are the benchmarks? Or is this a drive towards a quality um, time, time, timely delivery and, and those, those components. So I think again, when that feeds back into the comments that, that Chris and Craig have made around this idea of the Yo uh, DZ Connect solutions are configured to support the unique environment in which we're setting, setting ourselves in. And depending upon those objectives and those benchmarks and, and, um, the value that that particular customer is hoping to gain out of a total talent solution is in some respects going to dictate the levers we pull, the buttons we push, the design that we drive toward in order to ensure that we're meeting the objectives of the customer. Because if at the end of the day, the customer is concerned about quality and we design and implement systems, solutions, and process that is driven towards cost containment, we could be successful in meeting Yo's objectives, but not meet the objective of the customer, right? And, and that can flip just as easily the other way. So really, you know, around those benchmarks and what is success and long-term success equal to, the better we can align our program and our design and our delivery to the expectations of the customer who is driving towards a total talent solution, the better long-term success we have. And as Chris just alluded to, it's not just about the initial setup because those dynamics, those players and those stakeholders within a customer environment change over time. And so then the question is, how can you from a total talent solution design perspective, adapt your program to meet the changing expectations or the evolving expectations of that particular customer engagement. And again, how do people, process, and technology play into that particular solution? Right, so yeah, I would, I would just echo what, what Mike and Chris said. I mean, it, it really comes down to clearly defining those critical success factors for the program, not just for the implementation, and then having that flexibility to flex, you know, after the program goes live to, to make adjustments where you need to, to meet those expectations. Okay, well, we are um, winding down to 3.30. Um, so what I wanted to do is <clears throat> if you each just want to express maybe what you think the one of the most critical elements is for, and I know you just talked about uh, a lot of them, but maybe what you think one of the most critical elements is for having a successful program. You had meant, you mentioned hyper-personalization and every client's different, of course, but is there one general um, item that you can leave the audience with as to what is super important to have a program be designed and implemented effectively? So I'll start, um, and I'll just say for, from my perspective, from a, from a a pure project management implementation perspective, uh, transparency between the customer and you know our team is the most critical um, aspect to me. Uh, being able to communicate and be honest with each other about you know pain points or things you don't like or things you do like, understanding that and being able to share that information you know without judgment or without you know uh, hesitation really helps us design a program that is hyper personalized. If customers hold back or they're they're afraid to share something because for whatever reason. Uh, that makes it difficult down the road to to design a program for them. And then, of course, once it goes live, you find out something wasn't shared and then you know, there's a, a red flag and there's an issue. The more transparent we are together and honest with each other during the implementation, the, the longer success the program's going to have. Yeah, I think 
I think Craig was uh, wise to go first because he, he definitely, um, <laughs> Craig reports to me. So it's awesome because some of those things are things that we talk about quite a bit. So I'm really glad that, that Craig shared that perspective. And I would, I would echo that. Honestly, Craig, you said that you know, really, really well. And I, I probably can't a lot, I can't add a lot of, of extra to it other than, you know, I go back to the, the relationship aspect, that people aspect. I think that, um, you know, you, I think for programs to work well, I think you need good process, right? It, it needs to be consistent, repeatable process, not red tape process. We don't want, we don't process, we want process that slows things down. We want process that empowers people to do great work within the programs that are designed for them. So um, I would say in, in my organization, I take a lot of time to really discuss what's the best process to implement, what's the best process for operational execution, and how does it impact people? And what are our relationships with those people? And are we listening to what their needs are? And are we having, to Craig's point, those transparent conversations on what we can execute on? And what things might need a little bit more time at the lab to, to review and develop? So um, yeah, I think those are some of the, the key aspects. Yeah, and, and I would just echo what Craig and Chris has shared. It really it is driven by the quality of the relationship and how that relationship translates into transparency and communication, right? Um, because people do business with people and, and businesses get things done through people. And, um, and, and that is, again, I think, frankly, part of what drives the hyper-personalization approach of, of Yo and our, our DZ Connect solution. For sure. Okay, um, so we are right about our ending time here. Um, I do want to say thank you so much to Craig, Mike, and Chris. Uh, we really appreciate you sharing your insights uh, with our audience today and to you. Um, and thank you to our participants for taking the time to join us today. Um, visit the association website to view the calendar of upcoming live stream sessions. Um, don't forget that all live stream sessions, including this one, will be available on demand to members. Um, and if you're looking to get more involved in the association, presenting a live stream is a great way to start. Again, you can contact me. And I encourage you, everybody, to um, connect with Craig, Mike, and Chris on LinkedIn. Um, build up the HR Today community. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to email me at the email address uh, on the screen. So thanks again to everybody. Um, look forward to connecting soon. And thanks again to our presenters. So everybody have a wonderful day. Thanks so much. Thank you. Bye-bye.